Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cubase Secrets. Today I want to talk about a thing that people sometimes miss out when mixing in Cubase and this is the VCA faders. If you've never used VCA faders then keep watching because they are a powerful tool that can help you get better mixes faster and in this video I'm going to show you how to use them properly. Let's get started. In order to demonstrate how VCA faders work, I'm going to show you a very simple example and a very simple use case. So let's listen to this track. This, as you can tell, it's a full arrangement, but we're going to focus on these guitars that we have right here. So let's have a listen. So as you can see, we have two guitars right here and they play slightly different things. What I've done already is I have grouped them. So I'm sending these two guitars to a group channel right here. So let's open our mixer and let's see what we have here. As you can see, here we have the first guitar. This is the second one. And I have panned them hard left and right. So I'm going to solo the group channel here and we're going to see what happens. One thing that I might want to do for these guitars is to process them in a very similar way. So maybe add the same EQ, maybe add the same sense, add the same filters and so on and so forth. So VCA faders and the grouping capabilities that they have allow us to do that very, very easily. Now, one of the things that confuses many people is the difference between a VCA fader and a group channel. So let me explain what the difference is. As you can see, I've sent these two guitars in this group channel, like I said, and now what I can do is I can apply effects, I can apply an EQ to this group channel, and I can also change the level. So let's have a listen. Let's go ahead and create a VCA fader and let's see what the difference is. So in order to create a VCA fader for these two acoustic guitars, the easiest way to do this is to select both of them. So I'm going to select the first one, hold shift and select the second one as well. And now I have both of them selected. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click right here on the channel name and then I'm going to select add VCA fader to selected channels. And when I do this, as you can see, we have created a VCA fader. The VCA fader, you will see that it has no slots for insert effects. It has no EQ, none of that. And that's because the VCA fader, you have to see it as a remote control for these two channels now. What I can do with the VCA fader is if I push it down, you will see that I'm controlling both of these two faders at once. But with the relative volume that they have. So I'm not changing the relationship between these two guitars. So for example, let's say if I have this guitar a little bit higher in volume, I can use my VCA fader to bring them both down. Now, this fader doesn't carry any audio. This is just so that we can control both these faders at once. And this is a workflow that has been inherited by large format consoles that you could find in recording studios. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this VCA fader and rename it. I'm going to call it Acoustic Guitars. And as you can see, now we also have a link group right here. I'm going to explain what this is because this is one of the most powerful things. But let me show you what the difference is already compared to the group channel that we have right here. So one of the things that you can do with a VCA fader that it's not possible to do with the group channel is that let's say I have this black valve compressor here for these guitars and let's play them. You will see that I'm compressing a little bit, but to be honest with you, if I wanted to have a little bit more compression, there's not much that I can do when it comes to the group channel. Because if I push the fader up or down, 
we're going to have the exact same compression. Why? Because unless I set this plugin to be post fader, this is not going to drive the compressor more. And even if I set it to a post fader position, then it would be way more tricky to do what I'm about to show you that we can do with the VCA faders. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to instead push the VCA fader up and now we can drive the compressor even more while keeping the relative level and relationship between these two channels. Let's have a listen. So now because I'm pushing these guitars into the group channel and into the black valve compressor, I'm getting more compression. This is not only useful for driving a compressor more or a plug-in more, but it's actually very useful if you have a group channel and you have a certain amount of compression and you're hitting that group channel too hot, then the best way to do your gain staging is to have your VCA fader right here and then you can adjust the level of all the channels that go into the group way easier and way faster. But now let me show you some other really powerful and useful things that you can do with the VCA faders and the linking capabilities. So as you can see on the VCA fader we have this link 3 tag right here. So if I want I can just click here and I can edit the link group settings and let's see what we have here. So as you can see the first thing that I can do is I can rename this link group. I'm going to call it acoustic guitars and as you can see I can use the VCA fader. I want this and now I can link all of these things if I want to for these two channels. So let's make a plan. First of all, I don't want to link the volume because I want them to be a little bit different, as you can see. So I'm not gonna link the volume for these two guitars. I don't wanna link the panning because I want to have them left and right. So if I linked the panning, they would be panned in exactly the same way. But I might want to link the EQ. I might want to link the dynamics, the compressor, the gate, pretty much our channel strip. Maybe I want to link the send effect. So if I want to add a reverb to both of these guitars, I can do this straight away. I want to link the inserts and maybe I want to link the mute and solo button. I can even link the automation, the routing, the selection, and the record enable monitor button. So all of these things can be linked. And this allows you to have these guitars work as a unit, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have this selected and I'm gonna hit okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start processing and you will see how much faster I can work by using the link groups. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a low cut filter. Everything is linked. So if I change the filter slope, let's make it 24 dBs, you will see that they change straight away. Now let's add a little bit of EQ to make this guitar sparkle a little bit. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go into the EQ curve. And you will see that now both of the guitars have the exact same EQ curve. And even though they are spread left and right and they have their own individual volumes, I can still have the same exact processing. Now, if I go to my channel strip and let's say I want to add a tiny bit of compression, for example, let's add the tube compressor here. You will see that this compressor gets added to both of the guitars. And if I open it and I start tweaking it, you will see that this compression gets added on both guitars. Now, if I want to do any automation for these guitars, I can just automate this VCA fader. And as you can see, even on my controller here, when I use my VCA fader, these faders are getting controlled 
by this VCA fader. Now, let's say I want to activate a send for both of these guitars. I can just go to my sense here and I can activate it. You can see they both activate the reverb and now I can just use my sliders so I can send these guitars to the reverb with exactly the same amount. So I think that by now it's very obvious how fast the VCA faders and the link groups allow you to work when you're mixing. Now if at any point you want to unlink a channel, you can just go here, click on this drop down arrow and you can select unlink selected channels and this will unlink the channel. Cubase will tell us that the link group acoustic guitars will be removed and it will also ask us if we want to keep the combined automation. Now right here I use just two channels to show you this example but you can imagine that if you're working with acoustic drums where you have eight channels of drums and you want to respect the relative levels of all the elements of your drum kit, VCA faders and link groups are incredibly useful. The same goes for backing vocals, for synths, for bass. If, for example, you have a DI bass and an amp bass and you want to keep the relative level, but you want to also send them to a group and maybe drive the group with a compressor or something like this, or maybe a saturation plugin. So I hope that this video inspires you to use the VCA faders and the link groups in Cubase. If you haven't done so already, I'm sure you're going to have loads of fun with them and they will help you mix faster and more efficiently. In the comments down below, let us know if you've already been using the VCA faders and if you have any cool tips to share with the Cubase community and let us know what you'd like to see next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.